Okay, so we grow our fungi. We produce our own fungi. And I'll tell you, it's, it's a whole lot cheaper. Okay, we can produce 10 gallons per acre of compost mineral tea for about three bucks, right Ed? Three dollars. And we can put out hundreds of thousands of species of bacteria, fungi, our protozoa, and start our nematode populations. Three bucks. That takes a little work, it's a pain in the butt, but it's pretty cheap. And that's how we start putting the biology back into the soils very, very inexpensively to start dealing with our pathogens and our micro populations. So Ed's got a brewer. How big is your brewer, Ed? A little bit bigger than your coffee cup? A little bit. A little bit. Tell us about your brewer, Ed. Your latest brewer. 8,000 gallons. You brew. You brew it depends on what you're doing. If you put it through irrigation, you let them go about 36 hours. If you try to put it through the sprayer at 24, you plug. The, the fungi plugs down. That's how fast it grows. <coughs> and there's, if you put them under a microscope, there's trillions of them. You can and watch move around. Oh yeah. You can see them, you can see them so just like fish. And it all starts from scratch like when you start out, it's nothing. It's nothing. They're all dormant in the compost, the humus that we make. Then we put in minerals and foods and then depending on how we feed the microbes is we're either growing bacteria, we're growing fungi, we're growing protozoa. So when we bring stuff up for Ed, what we're doing is growing the, the fungi and the protozoa populations because those are the ones that are missing. Ed's got plenty of bacteria. Okay, what we need is the higher organisms. And so we already have grown this material so we've got tremendous biology in it, but then when he grows it, he uses certain foods to stimulate not bacteria, but fungi protozoa. And then the, then the nematodes will come too. So how do you do that? And this, you have a huge 8,000 gallon you, tank. You got a, did we you got an air pump? Pitch? Huh? Did you find a we, we didn't. I couldn't find it on my phone. I am sorry. But, but the cool thing is you got this gigantic hot tub out there and it's aerated. Because again, these are aerobic microbes. They need air to grow. And we brew them and reproduce them. So we can take 25 pounds of compost and we can make 8,000, 10,000 gallons of brew and have these microbes grow because they reproduce sometimes of them in minutes and and so they start reproducing you go from one to, to two to four to eight to 16 to 32 million you get there pretty quick and so we put these out in the soil and now our plants don't need all of them but they've got to have these beneficial microbes back but the plant will go through and select which ones it wants to live that's the other cool thing is, just because I put a soil microorganism out there doesn't mean it will live. That's up to the plant. So your corn, your wheat, your hay, okay, your blueberries, your apple trees, your tomatoes will decide what microorganisms live underneath it and which don't. Because it won't feed the ones it doesn't want. Our job is just get them out there and let the plant decide because remember, the plant came pre-programmed. It already knows this stuff. We are the dummies in this equation. So he takes that brew out and sprays it on the field? Yeah, I do. Spray it. Or spray spray it or, or conventional? Any it, it, it'll, it's, it, Everything that we have in that arena qualifies for organic. So you apply it to the in crop. That's yeah. That's how it's going. Yeah. You, 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 you don't you, use fungicides. See the. Uh, I haven't bought fungicides for four years. See, that's the other thing is, is, is we talk about the good microorganisms down here in their root system protecting it from the pathogens. Okay, I want to expand your minds one more step or two. Okay, we think that, that the, the plant's root system is its stomach. That's where it gets its nutrition. Is that right? Is the answer no or answer no? Okay, this is, what we, this is what we're taught. The plant picks it up through the root. 
okay, the plant will take as much, if not more, nutrition through the leaf surfaces than it will the root. Okay, so I have, a, I have an entire different stomach up above ground. And so, if I have a bare leaf surface up here, and I've got a rust coming off my neighbor's field or from the next county, and the wind's blowing, and that rust comes along here and he goes, oh goodness gracious, look at the sugar on that surface. This plant isn't quite healthy enough. I'm going to land here and colonize. And you guys see this happening because you start to see these little specks on your weed. And it starts to grow and expand because that microorganism, that pathogen, lit on that wheat surface, lit on there, started utilizing some of the food sources, and you start to see this dead spot. And it'll get bigger, and it'll get bigger, and it'll get bigger because the plant pathogen is pooping out toxins, killing the tissue. Well, if a bad guy can fly halfway across Montana and land on your wheat and start killing it, why can't we put a good guy on there so that this whole surface is covered with good guys? So when Bad Benny arrives from Abe's County over there and comes in here, it goes, hey, this is not a very happy bunch. They're not going to let me have any food on here. And first thing is they'll kill me. So now I'm using my biology on my plant leaf surfaces to protect against my airborne bacteria and fungal pathogens. Okay, if we put nothing on our leaves at all, then we're left with a chemical alternative. But biology is way more effective at doing this. And then the, th the other cool thing is, is when the biology gets established on here, what it's doing is it will colonize this leaf surface and it will utilize the exudates that come out of the pores on top and below the leaf and it will take those, recombine stuff, and put them back into the plant as nutrition. And they say, well, where does it get the minerals from? Well, I know the wind never blows in Montana. And there's never dust in the air. All it takes is a micro speck of dust to land on a leaf, and I have got a lot of nutrition. Those microbes will tear that little guy apart, say, I can use this zinc, I can use this manganese. Oh, look, man, we got some calcium. This is cool. I can make chocolate chip cookies. I can make chocolate cake. I can make pancakes. And my plant's going to have the best dinner ever. And that's what it does. And so we use biology instead of fungicides. Fungicide, we may go in and kill that fungi or that pathogen for a week, maybe two weeks. Then we have to spray it again. Well, that's another 10 or 15 bucks down the hatch because I haven't fixed the problem. I dealt with the symptom. If I put biology on here, fortify the plant nutrition, I have a protective coating from the microbes and I have better plant nutrition coming in. So I can use the plant above the ground just like below the ground to collect nutrition from the air and the soil. Do you do this with one app? Yeah, you, yeah, if you put it on with one application, so one time in the season. One time, it'll stay on there until you kill it. You kill something yeah. Yep. The only time that this doesn't work if there is such a incredible influx of pathogens that they can overwhelm this system. But that doesn't happen very often. You could, but, but the remaining microbes on here are going to expand really fast too. Okay. Yeah, if we have nothing on there, what we've done is damage the tissue. And, and, and I want to go back one more time and talk about a fungicide, okay? Because the plant has, the plant has on its leaf surface, it has seven genetic capabilities for resistance to disease. Okay, a fungicide will nullify six of those. Because fungicides use these penetrants, or these surfactants, that destroy the cuticle or the membrane surface of your plant leaves. That's how they get this stuff in there. Okay? 
when you have glyphosate exposure to your plant, it will get the last one. So you have zero genetic resistance from disease between glyphosate and fungicides. And so when you start using these, you usually have to keep using them. And that's why. I've destroyed my protective barrier and my plant's own genetic resources are no longer viable. So if you go out in the spring and you think you're doing yourself a little bit of protection of just putting on a bump or something, you're setting the plant up for... You are. ...for being susceptible. Perfectly said. You just are going to help it get sicker faster. But we're taught to use the fungicides as a preventative measure. Sometimes it's like, hey, we just do this in case the bad guys show up. Well, that's common practice. If we, and, and these fungicides can get a little bit pricey. Well, your biology, when you make it on site, you will fix a host of problems and it will be a couple dollars an acre. So it's affordable. And then you've got a workforce, a protective force, a nutrient force. You can, yeah, you, as, as soon as you're not spraying more, you can spray more plant than soil. You, you want to get this stuff on. Does it spread? Yeah, it spreads. That's the cool thing about microbes is they'll reproduce and grow. You can't get fertilizer to reproduce and grow yet. We haven't figured out how to do that. So, Ed, if they, if they grow so fast, can you supply us all with one 8,000 no, gallon tank? Or I'm not even going to. Ed, this is a cool thing. I go up there, and th that brewer starts late April, and it never shuts off until October. It is going somewhere all the time. I mean, it is, like, cool. Ed is the brewmaster of Montana. I mean, Budweiser has nothing on this guy. Jeez, you don't pivot. The cool thing yeah. is, is this is how we fix systems. If we want to fix a plant, again, every underlying system is either a microbe or a mineral. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. If we're using something else, we have taken a shortcut and we are trying to band-aid the system in the wrong way. Abe. So this stuff will help uh, to prevent Escocida too? Yeah, absolutely. That's a bad one. It, it is. 